Welcome back, everyone. Um, I have yet to finish grading scene two. Um, I apologize, but I am really getting kind of overwhelmed with all of the preps that I have. So just please bear with me. I promise I will get them as soon as possible. Um, we are going to get into scene three today, and actually we're going to also read scene four. So I'm going to make one video for the two of them and one Google form, okay? So um, in the last scene, essentially, Juliet misunderstood the nurse at the start of the scene. She had been waiting for Romeo to show up so that they can consummate their marriage and she could lose her virginity. And then the nurse comes in saying, he's dead, he's dead, right? Um, and Juliet misunderstands her, thinking that Romeo is dead. Um, and then, of course, after some, you know, discussion, they kind of clarify everything that had gone down. And the nurse reveals to Juliet that Romeo is in Friar Lawrence's cell. So um, she also gave him a ring or gave her. She also gave her a ring to give to Romeo. Okay, so now we are in Friar Lawrence's cell where the nurse will be. Um, coming at some point. Okay, so um, Friar Lawrence, Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Right, calamity, as you may know, because I think this is a vocab word for my freshman, right? It means disaster. So affliction, okay, affliction is like bad things. Um, are loving of thy parts. Okay, enamored means loving, right? So he's like, man, you've got some bad luck there, Romeo. Um, and you are married to calamity, okay? Romeo, father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not? Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I'll bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. So here, Friar Lawrence is telling Romeo that the prince has decided to spare his life and simply banish him. Okay? Most of us would be like, Thank you, Jesus, right? That is not how Romeo responds. Ha, banishment, be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. Here from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wild. Once again, we have this idea, be patient, right? Um, Settle down, okay? You'll be banished from Verona, but that doesn't mean forever, okay? Romeo, there is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, and hell itself, hence banished, is banished from the world, and world's exile is death, then banished is death misturned, calling death banished, Thou cuttest my head off with a golden axe and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. Friar Lawrence, O oh deadly sin, O oh rude unthankfulness, thy fault our law calls death, but the kind prince, taking thy part, hath brushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Romeo responds, obviously, you can probably sense in how I'm trying to read this, that Friar Lawrence is yelling at him and reproaching him for not being grateful for the prince's mercy. Romeo says, "'Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven and may look on her, but Romeo may not. More validity." More honorable state, more courtship lives here, lives in carrion flies than Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal immortal blessing from her lips, who even in pure and vestal modesty still blush as thinking their own kisses sin. But Romeo may not. He is banished. Flies may do this, but I from this must fly. There are free men, but I am banished. And sayest thou yet that exile is not death? 
hadst thou no poison mixed, no sharp brown knife, no sudden mean of death, thou never so mean, but banished to kill me? Banished, O oh, friar, the damned of use, that word in hell, howling it attends. How hast thou the heart, being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend professed to mangle me with that word banished? Okay, so I'm probably not doing the greatest job here at conveying Romeo's sadness and um, grief at the fact that he has been banished, okay? He talks about how it's not fair that cats and dogs and even flies get to reside in the presence of Juliet, but he cannot, okay? Friar Lawrence, thou fond madman, hear me speak a little, or hear me a little speak. Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word, adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, thou, though thou art banished. I love this part, right? So Friar Lawrence says that philosophy, okay, is adversity's sweet milk. So he uses a metaphor here to talk about philosophy and how it is useful in understanding how to go about dealing with this. Yet banished, hang up philosophy, Romeo says, unless philosophy can make a Juliet, displant a town, reverse a prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not, talk no more. Ah, oh, Romeo's a little bit of a whiner here. He's not getting his way, as many young people um, might experience from time to time, and so they whine about it. Friar Lawrence, oh, then I see that madmen have no ears. How should they when the wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Romeo says, thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt murdered, doting like me, and like me banished, then mightest thou speak, then mightest thou tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now. So Romeo is now on the ground, lying prostrate, maybe banging his arms, right? He's having a little bit of a tam temper tantrum here. Um, but I also want to try to feel empathy for him. And that is what he is asking of Friar Lawrence, right? So thou canst not speak of that thou dearest does not feel, right? He's like, you don't understand what I feel. And I think that this is actually a theme that runs throughout Romeo and Juliet. Oftentimes we have these young children who are not understood by their parents. And oftentimes you guys might not feel understood by your parents. Um, and so I think we can kind of offer him some sympathy here. Romeo is throwing himself to the ground again, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Now all of a sudden, we hear a knocking. Who's at the door? We'll see. Arise, one knocks, good Romeo, hide thyself. Romeo, not up, unless the breath of heart sick groans. Mystic, mist-like enfold me from the search of eyes. More knocking. Friar Lawrence, hark, how they knock. Who's there? Romeo, arise, that will be taken. Stay a while. Stand up. Run to my study. By and by. God's will, what simpleness is this? I come, I come. Okay, so this is a little bit tense because the audience wouldn't know who is at the door, but you can maybe presume. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? Nurse. Let me come in, and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet, Friar Lawrence, admitting the nurse. Welcome, then. Enter the nurse. Oh, holy friar. Oh, tell me, holy friar, where's my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? Friar Lawrence, there on the ground with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress's case, just as, just in her case. O oh, woeful sympathy, piteous predicament, even so lies she blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up, stand, and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an O? 
right? So the nurse is even trying to get Romeo up, stand and be a man. Now he has been offended. His manhood has been offended before as well, okay? Have you noticed that there's a lot of talk about what it means to be a man in this play? Hmm, it's a motif. The nurse says, or Romeo says, nurse, I, sir, I, sir, death's the end of all. Romeo rising up. Spakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Doth not she think me an old murderer? Now I have stained the childhood of our joy, with blood removed but little from her own. Where is she, and how doth she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? So Romeo suddenly is concerned about Juliet. He is able to pull himself together to learn this. The nurse says, oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed, and then starts up, and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then falls down again. Romeo, as if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her, as that name cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, friar, tell me in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge. Tell me that I may sack the hateful mansion. And he draws a dagger. Okay, and I've talked about this in several scenes so far. These two children have impulsively, impulsively resulted to wanting to kill themselves. Okay, he is urging Friar Lawrence, tell me, Friar, what vile part of my body, my anatomy, right? Doth my name lodge? Where does my name live so that I can kill it? Because he is saying that he has brought distress to his dear Juliet. Friar Lawrence, hold thy desperate hand. Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Thy tears are womanish, womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast, unseemly woman in a seeming man, an ill-beseeming beast in seeming both. Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tibble? Wilt thou slay thyself and slay thy lady that lived that thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself? Why railest thou on thy birth, the heaven and earth, since birth and heaven and earth all three do meet in thee at once, which thou at once wouldest lose? Fie, fie, thou shamest thy shape, thy love, thy wit, which, like an earth usherer, aboundest in all usest none in that true use indeed, which should be deck thy shape, thy love, thy wit. Thy noble shape is but a form of wax, digressing from the valor of a man. Thy dear love sworn but hollow perjury, killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish. Thy wit, that ornament to shape and love, misshapen in the conduct of them both, like powder in a skillless soldier's flask is set of fire by thine own ignorance and thou distempered with thine own defense what rouse thee man thy juliet is alive for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead there art thou happy tybalt would kill thee but thou slewest tybalt there art thou happy the law that threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it to exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings light upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array, but like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou pouts upon thy fortune and thy love. Right, so this part is actually interesting and I haven't really ever stopped here like this before, but he is saying that he's got good luck right, which is the opposite of what Romeo is saying. Romeo is saying, oh, fortune fool, right? But really, if you do think about it here, Romeo actually has has a little bit of luck here. Take heed, take heed, for such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed, right? So Friar Lawrence is saying, go to Juliet, as we had initially planned. Ascend her chamber, right? Climb into her bedroom, hence and comfort her. But look thou stay not till the watch be set. Watch is the police. 
don't stay there until the police are out, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentest forth in lamentation. Okay, so this is part of Friar Lawrence's plan here, okay? So go to Juliet, spend the night with her, consummate the marriage, right? And then go to Mantua and live there for a while until we can blaze your marriage. In other words, tell everybody about your marriage. We can reconcile your friends. We can beg pardon of the prince. Oh, I can't highlight it. Um, and then call me back with 20 hundred times more joy than, than what you could have even imagined before. Go before nurse, commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrows makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. So nurse, go back home, make sure everybody goes to bed, and since everybody's crying, that might be easy to do. Romeo is going to come there tonight. The nurse says, oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. She's praising Friar Lawrence for his philosophy, for his wisdom, right? This is, if you were to really analyze this um, speech, this is a monologue. So it's long and he's talking to other characters. These are not his thoughts. So this is an example of a monologue. Okay, the, the nurse continues, my Lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. And then Romeo um, says, do so and bid me, bid my sweet prepare to chide. The nurse says, oh, do so and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Tell her to get ready to get mad at me, okay? The nurse says, here, sir, a ring she bid me give you, sir. Okay, nurse gives Romeo a ring. Hi, you. Make haste for it grows very late. And then she exits. How well my comfort is revived by this. So the ring, it kind of makes Romeo happy again. Friar Lawrence says, go hence, good night. And here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set or by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua. I'll find out your man and he shall signify from time to time. Every good half to you that chances here. Give me thy hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. A couple important things here, okay? So he's saying sojourn in Mantua. Sojourn means journey. So go to Mantua and stay there for a little while. Okay, usually a sojourn is a short journey. I'll find out your man. So he's talking about his buddy Balthazar, who is going to go back and forth and tell him what's going on over in Verona. Okay. Um, and then Romeo finally says to end the scene, but that a joy past joy calls out on me. It were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Okay. And that is the end of the scene. Sorry. I think that was a bit long. Um, I'm going to stop this here actually, and I'm going to upload the next video. So if you need a break, you can do that. Okay.